As tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what are you drinking tonight? I'm going to start with Angelo. All right. To continue my uh, installment of highlighting Black-owned breweries in honor of Black History Month here in the month of February, I'm going to talk about 18th Street Brewery in Gary, Indiana. So 18th Street Brewery in Gary, Indiana was uh, founded by Drew Fox, uh, who took a trip to Belgium uh, in 2008 and sparked his interest in brewing beer from his home. So um, the he created a Kickstarter campaign to raise money, um, and that's how his uh, beer was able to, um, or his company was able to grow uh, to where it is today. So I actually pulled up his uh, Kickstarter uh, goal, and he um, actually was able to fund 24000 of a $12,000 goal to move the home brewing company uh, out of his home and into an actual brewery, um, again, located in Gary, Indiana. And actually, oddly enough, um, the brewery is not on 18th Street, as this is an homage to uh, a street in his hometown of Chicago, Illinois. So they have um, a brewery and tap room in Gary uh, that serves all their uh, brew on tap, as well as um, uh, a nice menu of food available. And um, I wanted to highlight a couple of their flagship beers, as uh, Michael had up on the screen there, the, their uh, base Best Patio Pills um, and their Candy Crushable uh, Pale Ale with Lactose Sugar Added with Simcoe, Falconer's Flight, and Warrior Hops. Um, and they have a really, really nice uh, menu of brews available. The Hunter, which is brewed with cocoa nibs and lactose. It's their double milk stout. They have a double IPA with grapefruit zest added called the Rise of the Angels. Uh, but yeah, so I wanted to highlight 18th Street Brewery out of Gary, Indiana, and Drew Fox, uh, who founded it. And again, um, very similar to this show where this show started with the text, This his dream in owning and operating a brewery started uh, with a vacation to Belgium. So Very cool. Very cool. I, I I had not heard of this one. And then uh, you said Gary, Indiana. Uh, Kevin, uh, home to who? The Jacksons. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and also the independent baseball team. When I say, uh, oh, is it the Gary? Oh, my Ra- goodness. I'm going to have to remember this. Rail Shore. Uh, is it, it was it the, South Shore Railcats or something yeah, like that? That's, yeah. right. that's what it was. That's yeah, like that's what it was. An independent team, right? It's in the same league as the uh, Chicago Dogs. You know, I, I think it's the same. That's league. right. That's right. Just, some fun stuff. And also I saw that they actually have a tap room in Indianapolis too as well. So. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, we're gonna go ahead. Nope. That's it. All right. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of course. Next up, Kevin, this is a cool one. Yeah. And I remember seeing this can a few months ago and then a friend of the show, Steve gave me this. I've been sitting on this. So this is called pale from the crypt It's by a brewery called liquid gravity brewing company. And they're in uh, San Luis Obispo, which is, you know, like about like two and a half hours north of L.A. or so. So this is really interesting, too, because um, this actually is officially licensed with the Tales from the Crypt comic book. So as I was really surprised, I go, oh, that's a cool homage. I'm like, nope, it's actually a real one. So Pale from the Crypt is a big, bold, unapologetic West Coast Pale Ale. It boasts a robust aroma of peaches, tangerines, and passion fruit. A backbone of two-row barley, caramel, malt, and torrified wheat act to balance the beer for a frighteningly satisfying experience. I need this in October, but besides the point. So uh, I see a quote here. We are extremely excited to join forces with EC Comics on this project. So EC Comics is the ones behind this. Their brand and legacy as a creative force are inspiring, and we are honored to have the co- opportunity to work with them. From uh, uh, Brendan Go, from the owner and brewer of Liquid Gravity. And so this is the first officially licensed beer for EC Comics. And Pale from the Crypt will feature iconic cover art from the original Tales from the Crypt comic books, as well as original art created by an artist named Toby Newell. You'll find familiar faces such as the only man who might be older than me that I know of, the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> you probably recognize him from the Tales from the Crypt uh, TV show. That's what most of you probably would know this from. Uh, along with the Old Witch and Vault Keeper, along with the new Hot Witch Brewmeister and Malt Keeper. I don't know if you ha- uh, can get a want to solo me on this. I hope you hopefully get a good shot here to see there's those new characters. And I'm guessing it's people from the actual brewery. Oh, very so cool. They gave this original artwork with this. So, so it's like the brewmeister, 
yeah, the hop witch in the middle, and then on the bottom was the uh, the mall keeper. I'm like, they made their own little characters for this. So I thought it was a nice little touch too. And uh, and the gra and the and the uh, they had the binder and the guys going quickly, lift out his coffin. He doesn't belong in our sacred graveyard. He desiccates the very ground in which he's buried. <laughs> so I, I'm sure I'm. I, that was me yelling that, by the way. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that's me being an homage to me. So uh, for the first release in this in this partnership, it actually uh, is. I want to make sure I have the right one. So this actually been out for a while. This is cover art from the uh, 1951 Tales from the Crypt, February March issue. So actually, this is not. This might be a later release. So they keep releasing this with different artwork from different of the comic books. This one's from uh, issue number 26 from October 1951. So it's pretty cool with the label artist and they just put the little touch on it. So in the very list, it's been going on since January of 2021. So it's cool. So I'm like, I'm, so I'm like, that's a fun thing to see in officially licensed comic book. I'm like, that's a cool little touch for those who knows Tales of the Crypt. And look at them too. I was having fun looking at some of their beers. Um, they have a couple of fun names on paper. One of them I can't even say on the air because it literally <laughs> says F- the actual F word, money, get hops. I'd be like, all right, I'm down at that West Coast IPA. Uh, and they had a they had a uh, hazy IPA called Panic at the Beer Isle. So I was like, oh, that's oh. that's kind of fun too. And on our back, thank this I'm like, all right, I can support that, you know. And they also even made like a even have a hazy orange creamsicle uh, double IPA, which I'm like, whoa, that sounds kind of crazy. So I ever see that one called the Orange Cream Machine. I may have to have that. But yeah, this is a nice. Nice beer, just nice chill out beer. I didn't even get through the numbers on this. It's definitely like morning beer for me, I'm sure. Being a pale ale, it comes in at 5.5% ABV, uh, 45 IBU. So I only have one of these jacks, so I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be that fired up tonight. <laughs> just, just do some sipskis, brother. Do some sipskis, as a wise man once told me, life in moderation that's the key. Oh, I know. Okay. I'm sure I told you that. <laughs> that wasn't you, dude. That wasn't oh, you. I, sure. um, yeah, this is super cool. I, and boy, you know, the deeper we get into beer, it's so cool because there's all these like layers of, of, of things. Like I, I haven't, uh, let's see, Liquid Gravity. I've, I think yeah. I've heard of it. I've probably seen yeah. a couple beers by it, but then, you know, when we always dive in deeper uh, to the all these breweries, um, it's so cool to, to see how like pop culture. It's exactly like it's probably why we do the show. You know, it's like yeah. pop culture. Um, you know, they're all baseball fans, and and uh, there's always something like this. And then you know the comic book thing. I mean, like Unsung. If you ever uh, the one over by where Kevin uh, lives is um, is is a super comic book. And then there's a lot. Oh, what was the other um, GameCraft? Is another yeah, game grass video game one. Uh, yeah, I went there yesterday. They actually had a, a new beer called Ratchet and Dank, named after the Ratchet and Clank game, which I thought was awesome. Oh, nice see, time. there you go. So they do a little fun video game stuff like that. But but this is like a brewery I never even heard of. And now they somehow had were, were, were creative enough to say, hey, you know, but I don't know who would have reached out first, but to actually get this officially licensed, that's cool. That's, a that's amazing. That's super cool. Thank you for sharing that one. Next uh -huh. up is Cowboy Jack Durango with one that actually uh, I had recently. Uh, it was a collab, I believe. Yeah. So the shop beer company opened its doors in August of 2016 and has been drenching Arizona in its delicious craft beer ever since. The shop was born from the ashes of, get this, a closed coffee shop named the Cartel Coffee Lab. And much like the name of my lovely city, it rose from the ashes like a phoenix. This homegrown Arizona powerhouse converted a residential home in downtown Tempe into their tap room. And interestingly enough, the home was the residence of former mayor of Tempe and member of the U.S. House of Representatives, Harry Mitchell. They took the name The Shop in honor of the hardworking craftsmen out there who often use the term, I'm headed to the shop, I'm headed back from the shop. So they wanted to get it out there for the working man. So they called it The Shop. Their main selling point other than their top shelf beer skis is a taproom patio. The layout and decor gives you the feeling of a badass backyard barbecue at a close friend's house. 
So Bruniverse, if you're lucky enough to find yourself in the Tempe area and you're powerful thirsty, might I recommend sampling their Supreme Dream Cocktail IPA with apricot, passion fruit, and coconut. Have you ever heard of a cocktail IPA? I no. You haven't. I haven't no. either. This is the first that I've ever heard about it. It's a hazy IPA IPA base, and then they just throw fruit and fruit and fruit and fruit, and they make what they call a cocktail IPA to hit you with that nice IPA hoppiness that we like, but also some dramatic fruit flavors, and it's going to keep you coming back for more. So don't forget to tell them when you stop in that the Valley of the Sun's favorite son, Cowboy Jack Narango, sent you. Nice, nice. I, I'm I'm liking uh, everything I'm seeing from this from this brewery. Uh, I definitely this is one that shot to the top of the list. When I had the, I I think I had a collab uh, last time. I think it was potentially with Ren House. I I have to look again, but um, uh, but yeah, this is this one looks super cool. Uh, I think in that area. So in Tempe, I'm trying to think. Okay, so there is um, so, so Tempe. I I have, I have a really uh. My 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 young younger days, I was that's where I kind of grew up, and you know, like out of out of high school and and into into what I should have been going to college, but I didn't go to college. But in in Tempe is a, a is Arizona State University, so just south of there, there's like a there's railroad tracks, and right there is a place that uh, was called the Sun Club. Now the Sun Club was a, like this little punk club, and uh, like Nirvana played there. I think like. Um, uh oh god this just uh, name every like 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 punk band underground band that they would have played there you know but like nirvana in their very early 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 days uh played there but we used to go see the uh, see the bands there well right down if we were i, I went down there i was like oh I, I see if the sun club is still there it's not that it, i would thought it was going to be there i was like you know i knew that it had had left but but right down the street was uh four peaks is where Four Peaks started. So they took all that industrial area and then they just kind of made stuff. So I'm wondering if they might have they, they said it took over a residential area? Yeah, it was a home. It's a it's oh. a residential home. It was it was the the residence of uh, the former mayor of Tempe, man. Oh, that's wild. I yeah. have to definitely have to check that out. But it, yeah, that that area has like a lot of history, so I'm wondering where exactly it is. Uh, I will text you the exact cross street. Perfect. Perfect. I'm looking forward to that. Well, my beer for tonight is a collab uh, between uh, Tarantula Hill Brewing Company in Thousand Oaks, California and Beachwood Brewing called the Day Trek IPA. Uh, Beachwood Brewing is uh, from Long Beach, California it's one of my favorites and Tarantula Hill has been popping up a lot more. We had, I think it was called liquid candy, right? Kevin? I had that last year and I know, yeah. I don't, I don't remember. I think you had that. One I think I just well. had it recently. Like on your own, right. On your own. Outside yeah. Your own. So the day Trek IPA is a 7.1 ABV, no IBU listed. Uh, this West coast IPA collab with our friends at Beachwood is loaded with aromatic neck, uh, Nectaron, uh, Citra, and El Dorado hops. Uh, this one was brewed at the Tarantula Hill um, Brewery. I guess, obviously, the other one was at Beachwood. I guess it's another version of this. Um, that's what I'm liking is is now that that these uh, beers are being uh, collaborated with, and you get the best of both worlds. We get to learn about like I love Beachwood, so I trust any cl collab that they do. Um, this one is like uh, off the nose. Oh my gosh, super hoppy. Like I, I can already tell I'm going to love this beer. It's got that West Coast hoppy uh, profile. If you can see it right there, it's not mm -hmm. too not too cloudy. It's it's pretty, um, pretty golden. Super good. I mean, like it's a winner if it's a West Coast IPA for me. So this uh, Beachwood, I know what I'm going to get. Um, really good, smooth. Uh, great profile in hops and uh, yeah, I've never heard of uh, Nectaron uh, hops, uh, but I've had Citra and El Dorado, a good mix. So yeah, so um, if you see this one, a Day Trek IPA, definitely uh, pick this one up. This is uh, worth a try if you like West Coast IPAs. Um, yes, uh, Ian says. When, so when I go to the shop, I'm asking for a cocktail. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I saw that they they had a whole bunch of. Uh, uh, cocktails and I think I didn't know how they how they mix that in as well. 
Yeah, no, and I think their big winner is the uh, the church music IPA, which That's I know you I had. I had the church yes. music. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was that was tremendous. 